much nor the wise desiring only that I should follow. O Lord, with your eyes set upon me, gently smiling, you have spoken Good morning. Welcome to Mass here at Sacred Ark Church. We are glad to see you and happy that you are celebrating our 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand. and draw 
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her, nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold in view of her is a little sand, and before her silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed, the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between 
soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This past week, there was a video that started to become very popular after getting posted on a Catholic site. It shows a young woman who appears to be in her early 20s getting ready to enter a cloistered Carmelite convent, the kind that wear the same habit that you see St. Therese of the Child Jesus wearing. So in this scene, she's there at the door and you can already hear inside the convent, the sisters are singing to welcome her. And the mother superior opens the door in greeting. This young woman's parish priest is outside the door giving her a blessing. And then she turns to her dad and gives him a big hug. 
and then she turns to her mom and gives her a big hug and then there's someone else that must be a friend or a sister and someone that looks like it might be her aunt she's embracing them she's saying her goodbyes and then she turns and she goes to the door and she kneels down before the mother superior who's holding out a crucifix and the young girl kisses Jesus and then she stands up and she's welcomed into the convent where the other sisters who are still singing start throwing rice and rose petals at her as they welcome her into the community and then the mother superior waves at everybody and then closes the door <laughs> so it's a very striking scene and it's not something that we see happening that often these days is it but very profound it was a tearjerker i mean it'll get you it wasn't until the second time I watched it that I noticed a highly important detail. It skipped my attention the first time it was so subtle, but then it hit me like a ton of bricks the second time through the video. So whenever someone is changing their lifestyle, right, whenever they're making a big move, a big transition, what do you expect to see? So if you were moving to a new town to accept a new job, in your video, if we're watching you, we're gonna see lots of stuff, right? Probably a couple of truckloads full of stuff, all your stuff. You know what this young woman had going into the convent? Nothing. That's what I missed the first time. She had nothing. She didn't have a purse. She didn't have a backpack. She didn't have a suitcase. She just had the change of clothes on her back. A humble pair of sandals, a humble skirt, a humble shirt. That's it. That's all she had. Remarkable. Rem how can that be? How can a young woman who could have taken any career path she wanted be comfortable leaving everything behind? That just doesn't make sense to the average person these days. How you could give up all your stuff. But she did. And you could see in her face that she was happy because she was going towards something. She wasn't worried about what she was leaving behind. Her gaze was fixed on the love of her life, Jesus. Jesus had called her to himself. Jesus invited her to be his spouse, and she said yes. She accepted the offer, and now her whole life is ahead of her. She gets to live in love with Jesus with these beautiful religious sisters in their convent. And yes, they're gonna have their schedule and their prayers and their chores, and no, it won't always be easy. But she found the freedom that she's been looking for. She found true peace. She found happiness. And we praise God for that. But it's also a good chance for us to look at our life and say, am I really free? <laughs> am I really at peace? Am I really happy? Or what's holding me back? What's getting in the way? And that's what the gospel does for us today because there's another young person. This time it's a young man. Very similar situation. He's kneeling before Jesus. He's asking, what must I do to inherit eternal life? But this young man goes away sad. The young woman finds happiness. This young man goes away sad. Why? He didn't have the courage to say yes to Jesus. He wasn't willing to accept what Jesus was offering him. There's a couple of interesting clues. Did you notice that when Jesus looked upon this young man, it says he loved him. Jesus looked upon him and loved him. When Jesus looks upon us, he loves us. And because Jesus loves us, he wants good things for us. So if Jesus asks something of us, it's because it's good for us. It's because he loves us. It's because he wants us to have joy in him. The other clue is we don't know this young man's name because he didn't say yes to Jesus. If he had become one of Jesus' followers, we would know his name the same way we know the names of all the other followers of Jesus because we find our true identity in Jesus Christ. This young man had it right there for the taking. 
He could have found his true identity in Jesus Christ, but he walked away sad. You know what else Jesus saw when he met this young man? He saw that this young man was burdened. He was heavy burdened with all his possessions, and Jesus wanted to set him free. Sell all that stuff. Give it to those who need it, and come with me. Jesus wants to live with him. Jesus is offering him the biggest adventure of his life. Let go of all that stuff that's holding you back and weighing you down. Set it to the side. Give it to someone else. Come. Be with me. Come. Be free. Come. Be at peace. Come find the happiness you were created for. Come find your true identity and your purpose. Come live this adventure with me. Jesus was offering him everything, but he said no. And this is kind of a wake-up call for us because you and I, we get really busy with lots of stuff, don't we? We are very, very busy people. We are very, very stressed out and tired people. <laughs> it's just one thing after another, one issue, one problem, one doubt, one concern. And you know, who's typically calling the shots for our lives? Where are we making our decisions based on? It's usually what the world is telling us to do or what other people are telling us to do. Even friends and family members, they have expectations for us. Or what we're telling ourselves to do, the expe expectations we have for ourselves. Usually we're making our decisions based on what everyone else thinks of us and wants us to do except Jesus. <laughs> Somehow we don't take the time to listen to Jesus because we say, oh, I'm, I'm just too busy. I, I wish I had time for Jesus. I wish I could be able to carve out a little bit of time for Jesus in my day. <laughs> but that's the exact opposite recipe, right? We should be building our life around Jesus. Jesus should have the central place. He should be the heart of everything. And we bring everything to Jesus. Jesus you're the Lord of my life. You're the one that's calling the shots. You're guiding me. What do you want me to do with my time? What do you want me to do with my job? What do you want me to do with my relationships? What do you want me to do with my money? We bring everything to Jesus and say, Jesus, what do you want me to do with this? And whatever he tells us to do with it, we trust him because it's going to be for our happiness. And we're willing to make those sacrifices. And yes, sometimes set things aside because they're weighing us down and they're making us sad. In these scriptures, we're being told to pray because when we pray, we hear God's voice. God is looking upon us with love and he's going to tell us what's going to lead us to our happiness. So in the first reading, what we're told is pray and you'll get wisdom. And when you get this wisdom when you pray, you'll know what's important and what's not important, and you'll find the courage to say yes to what's important and no to what's not important. And in the second reading, it's telling us, pray with the word of God, because the word of God is like a sword that cuts through all the fog. Doesn't it feel like that? We walk around all day in a fog, and we're not always clear on what we should be doing or where we should be going or who we should be hanging out with or what we should be doing with this, that, or the other thing. It's really foggy. We're tired, and it's foggy, we're stressed out, and we're heavy burdened. We're very, very busy. And the Word of God is very clear. It's very effective. It's the voice of the God who loves us, who's, who's telling us, go this way, not this way. Do this, not that. And we want to listen to that because it's going to set us free. We're going to have that peace and that joy. Just like that young woman who was getting ready to enter the convent, to become the spouse of Christ and live her life with Jesus. I want you to keep that scene in your mind this week, that beautiful young woman and her courageous decision and the joy she found in Jesus Christ because that's what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus, one of his disciples, to leave everything behind and to follow him and to trust him because he loves us. He looks upon us with love. So I'm going to leave you with a challenge because I doubt anyone else is going to do this for you. I am going to give you permission. Okay, that sounds funny. But I'm going to give you permission to look at everything in your life and whatever is not important and whatever is not from Jesus 
and whatever's not going to set you free and give you peace, whatever's burdening you, whatever's making you so busy and stressed out, I'm giving you permission to say no to those things. You get to say no to those things now. And pick some real things, some very concrete things in your life right now, and have the courage to say no to them. We're not going to let the world tell us how to live. We're not going to let the media tell us how to live. We're not going to let all of these things steal our health, our joy, our peace, and the reason why we're here. We're not going to let these things control us anymore. We're going to say no to them. We're going to give them up and give them away and push them to the side. We're going to look at Jesus. We're going to see how he loves us. And we're going to let Jesus fill us with his love and cause us to sing for joy. We want to say yes to Jesus. We want to give up everything for Jesus. And we want to follow him wherever he leads because he is so good to us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord God, you fill our days with blessings in answer to our prayers. We turn to you now in our need. That the church embody the word of God and help all believers to know the saving power of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That rich nations find new ways to help those in poverty and to respond publicly to the victims of natural disasters. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For native peoples throughout the Americas that past injustices give way to justice, peace, and abundant Blessings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this holy assembly be aware of those in our midst who suffer want. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose ministries and contributions help to support and grow our parish that God will continue to bless and prosper them in all they do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the intentions we celebrate at this Mass, for Jesse Jaramillo and Teresita Mestas, 
and for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. May God graciously hear us through the sacred heart of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God of the harvest, the abundance of your grace inspires us to present our needs to you. Hear our prayers and help us to listen for the answer that will surely come through Christ our Lord. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of mine. It is for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, Father. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.